We are now moving to item nine our, on our agenda. Uh, it's our Aquaculture Industry Expansion and Initiatives Report Panel. We have uh, Dr. Tony Vaught. He's the director of the California Aquaculture Association. He's gonna be providing us um, an overview regarding uh, the interface of capture fisheries and aquaculture, aquaculture and recreational fishing, uh, seafood trends, uh, as well as business infrastructure supporting aquaculture. So, uh, and also I think uh, he is gonna be giving us uh, some um, hints in regards to proactive legislation. We're gonna have Dr. Michael Graham. He is the Director of Research and Development, Moss Landing Marine Laboratories, the Center for Agriculture, or Aquaculture. Uh, he's gonna be presenting recent progress towards the development of a strategic plan for research and education uh, at the CSU. And we have John Finger. He is the owner partner of Hog Island Oyster Company. He's gonna present on challenges and needs in the mariculture industry, including permitting seed source and growth opportunities. So if we can have uh, Tony and Michael and John, please come forward. Uh, after uh, they adjourn, we are going to uh, take a quick uh, 10 minute break and be able to bring back together. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. It's good to see you. We're gonna kick it off with Mr. Vaught and uh, we have five minutes. I'll give you a one minute warning. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, uh, Senator McGuire for the uh, forum and also for uh, Tom, for you bringing up aquaculture whenever, the word aquaculture whenever you can and the continued work of the, of the committee because it's important to bring these issues up every year and every time we have a chance. Good to see you. Um, when I put in the uh, uh, review of what I was going to say, you know, it's a little more than five minutes, so there are a few of those things I'll just keep brief um, and kind of center in on what's really important. So again, my name's Tony Vaught from Professional Aquaculture. I have a business in uh, the North Valley that uh, advises in aquaculture and been a farmer for many, many years. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak with you regarding the future of aquaculture. Um, as I said, I've been a fish grower for 38 years. I'm co-chair of the Department of Fish and Wildlife Aquaculture Advisory Committee that Randy uh, re uh, reported on and I serve as an aquaculture advisor for public projects and private businesses. And as I sat in, uh, listening this morning, you know, I, I think I'll get a list to, to, to you and, and to, uh, I'll send it to Tom on, on where the crossovers are of aquaculture and, and fisheries. We say aquaculture and fisheries in the same sentence and there's a lot of things that we cross over, research we're doing and things that we're looking at. We need to talk more about those things, you know, like salmon and warm water, we're working on research there. There's lots of things, so I'll try to do that. I last spoke to you a couple, two years ago. My message was the need for proactive approach to support the support of aquaculture. It's important that the demand for fish is met and the growth of aquaculture is steady and responsible. I'm pleased to report that there's been a big progress regarding the public's positive uh, uh, view of aquaculture. It's quite extraordinary actually over the last two years in my business and the level of interest of aquaculture. It's been due to the increased publicity of the importance of fish and shellfish farming. The reduced supply and increased cost of seafood has the public listening to the solutions. NOAA has recently opened the door to aquaculture in federal waters. The state university system is uh, addressing aquaculture and legislators are engaging in business-friendly legislation to further fish and shellfish production. This awareness also stems from the realization that we have a protein deficiency in the world and we need to be responsible with the use of available protein sources such as fish meal. Aquaculture uses only a portion of the fish meal harvested. Animal agriculture and pet food are large consumers of the resource. Uh, researchers and private nutritional companies are seeking alternate sources of nutrients, whether it be plant, protein, fish meal, reclaimed protein, or algae. The progress made in aquaculture will not only feed poor countries, but will feed protein poor countries, but will feed uh, provide fish for restaurants and household chefs and for recreation. Fish can return protein by efficient feed conversions and shellfish are not only delicious, but they're environmentally beneficial. And I really feel that California is poised to lead in aquaculture research, production and support businesses needed by fish and shellfish farmers. Let's not forget them. 
There's a, there's a reason the word fisheries and aquaculture are used in the same breath. Working waterfronts are essential to both capture fisheries and aquaculture. Aquaculture, to operate offshore, needs people familiar with working the ocean. Aquaculture needs hatcheries and onshore headquarters. Processing and marketing can be cooperative. Sites in Humboldt Bay, Ventura, and San Diego are looking to build on uh, onshore uh, facilities supporting offshore fish and shellfish culture. Many inland sites can serve both fresh and salt water. Inland aquaculture produces recreational fish important to the preservation of fishing opportunities to youth as well as adults. Trout, catfish, tilapia, sturgeon, bass, to name a few, supply the bulk of the fish from aquaculture for the table. Freshwater farmers have partnered with traditional crop producers to reuse and conserve water. Inland farms provide habitat for wildlife, much like rice farms. I'd like to see a FinFish aquaculture initiative launched this year. The recent and highly successful shellfish initiate, initiative um, championed by this committee and, and AB 226, authored by Speaker Atkins, are both models for every state regarding access to fresh and local seafood. My message to you today is to keep up the pro-aquaculture theme, look for business innovation which can benefit by new legislation, and be vigilant to legislation blocking progress. It's possible to grow fish and shellfish responsibly and cooperatively. If we do not, the alternative is a shortage of seafood and opportunity, again, exported. I wanted to add kind of off script, uh, listen this morning to the hardships of the of the crab industry, and I can really relate because a lot of the f uh, farmers have gone through sig uh, significant drought and some have closed down. And in the years past, it's just a tough, tough business, and you just have to keep at it. And um, I just really um, uh, want to uh, work with the committee and others to see how aquaculture can help. There's a lot of crossovers and a lot of people out of work, and there's a lot of uh, opportunity that might be coming up as aquaculture grows. They're all great people that know how to run boats, fix things, and they're uh, uh, resourceful, hardworking, and uh, so I just wanted to add that. No, Thank you. Very grateful, and I, I'm gonna come back and uh, ask you, and you don't need to answer it yet, we'll do it after, about the idea of a crab and shellfish commission, uh, particularly on your side on the shellfish commission, um, but would like to just get initial blush, and we'll go through the panel, we'll come back, if that's okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. We're going to go to Mr. Graham, um, who uh, is, the, again, the Director of Research and Development in the Mouse Landing Marine Laboratory Center for Aquaculture. We're grateful that you're here. How things been going? Uh, things are going well. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. I appreciate the, uh, thank the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, thank you. committee, and uh, Mr. Weslow. Yes, so for the record, uh, my name is Dr. Michael Graham. I'm Professor of Marine Ecology at the Moss Landing Marine Lab, San Jose State University. Um, today, I'm speaking to you as the Director of Research and Development for our newly minted Center for Aquaculture at Moss Lion Marine Labs. Um, this center is currently funded by California Sea Grant, uh, partially, as well as COAST, which is the uh, CSU Council for Ocean Affairs Science Technology. And as you know, their, their goal is to promote healthy oceans and also sustainable eco eco economic development um, of ocean-related issues. And so we very much appreciate their support. Um, we are very new on the stage. And some ask why we're interested in aquaculture. Why is the CSU per se interested? Um, as we just heard um, from Mr. Vaught, we've got a large increase in seafood production worldwide. If you look at the recent FAO numbers, about 50% of that now is now being made up of aquaculture. Um, a lot of that is occurring in very, very large um, regions of the world. Uh, of that, and you look at the consumption in California, um, except for uh, some species where the California production is very important, in other species it's almost uh, non-existent. For example, marine finfish. Um, you know, you do not get California produced um, um, fishes in that, and we just heard again Tony talk about that recently. So we at the CSU see an opportunity for the development of an infrastructure, an academic infrastructure utilizing the CSU system to support a productive 
aquaculture industry in California to enhance the industry that's current to bring it to levels that might help in minimizing the seafood trade gap, if you'd like to call it that, um, as well as producing an educated workforce that we think will do well. The CSU is very good at educated workforces, MBAs, nursing, forestry, and we think aquaculture could be something that would very much benefit the state. All the research I've done on aquaculture worldwide has been in China, Norway, Chile, Canada, they all have seamless integration between their academics and the industry and regulatory agencies. And um, that's something we currently lack right now in the United States and in California in general. So why the CSU? Why are we good at doing this? We, have four, we are the largest university in the United States. We have 23 campuses, over 470,000 students, over 50,000 faculty, two dozen research institutes. We have four campuses, Humboldt State, Chico State, San Diego State, and us at Moss Lyme Marine Labs that have specialized aquaculture programs already. But we're separate universities, even though we're part of the same system, as regards to coordinating those aquaculture efforts. So we are trying to build this center to be a direct one-stop shop for anyone interested in aquaculture in the state, whether they be regulators, NGOs, very importantly, industry, startup farmers, as well as academics looking to help do research within the state, come to this center, get involved in direct applications that, that would benefit us. Um, this coordinated research effort uh, is currently going with extramural funding, but we're looking to enhance that and make it easier for people to get in touch. Shared use of research facilities that are already being paid for by the state of California. We are looking to have specialized aquaculture degree programs that can be added on to existing bachelor's programs in these institutions that might help with them getting jobs um, statewide and nationwide. Student internships to put students in these farms for the direct experience, but also to help support these farms, especially in times of need. Um, students are cheaper, uh, uh, educated labor in a lot of cases, and they really are just looking for that experience. We have 470,000 of them, um, and that's a great resource we think we can help with. We also can serve as a neutral forum for policy debates. Um, we have poly science departments, business departments. We, it's not just about science and, and engineering that we can help. And, and finally, we'd really like to promote entrepreneurship, startups, um, trying to get, you know, potentially a grassroots efforts in certain aspects. You can't obviously do this with offshore farming. You don't just have a mom and pop startup show up in federal waters and start farming in California. But there are things that we can do and we'd like to encourage. So we're currently uh, just working on funding uh, for staffing this um, and doing this research coordination network. Like I said, we're leveraged already heavily by the state of California. These, these are faculty that already have jobs, they have offices, they have buildings, and we just want to coordinate them, get them involved with industry. The great thing about this is industry, the NGOs, and uh, the agencies are with us at the ground level while we are starting this. No, thank you so much. I have some questions, uh, but I'm gonna hold until we are done with Hog Island. Okay. So thank, thank you so much. We have Mr. Finger here, uh, who is the owner of Hog Island Oyster Company, some of the best uh, in the state. My goodness, it's good to see you, sir. Uh, <laughs> and we're grateful that you took the time. All right, well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for having me, giving me the opportunity to speak. So. Um, so I'm John Finger, um, founder and owner of the Hog Island Oyster Company. Uh, I've been growing oysters for 33 years in Tamales Bay and newly started up in Humboldt Bay as well. We have a uh, first California hatchery and uh, permitted up there and getting ready to break ground and I'm building, growing oyster seed and hopefully another farm. So I'm also on the board directors of the Pacific Coast Shellfish Growers Association. We represent shellfish farmers in California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii. Um, and a member of the California Shellfish Initiative Work Group, as well as the state's Aquaculture Development Committee. Lord knows I have any time to work anywhere else, but anyhow. Um, <laughs> so, um, the interesting thing is I just spent last week in Washington, D.C. Um, with our uh, association carrying similar messages to our federal representatives and agencies. And one of the things that we started realizing even last year is, is we've always considered ourselves really small fry, but when you start looking at the numbers on the West Coast, and particularly in California, in terms of revenue and seafood landings over the, the past few years, you know, farm-raised shellfish, you know, consistently is in the top three to five slot in, in terms of, of revenues. And, you know, we have the ability to grow that. You know, currently, the acreage we're farming on is, is you know, probably half or less than half of historically what was once farmed. So, and that means more jobs, more production of sustainable seafood within the state. Um, so we're starting to, to go, okay, we maybe need to flex our muscles a little bit and say we could use some help. You know, when we were back in DC, it was about NOAA and really about bringing more science to bear. And, and uh, there's some similar situations here in the state. 
the, the reason we're not seeing a lot of new farms and stuff is it's extremely expensive and onerous to permit new farms. Um, and so, you know, the, the maze of, of federal, you know, Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, you know, National Marine Fishery Service, and then the California Coastal Commission, Department of Fish and Wildlife, as well as local agencies. And the result is, is we've got no new farms or farmers, more particularly, in over 20 years. Um, and that's something we'd like to fix. And, you know, thanks to the support from, from you guys, you know, we've got this California Shellfish Initiative started about three years ago, keying off of NOAA's National Shellfish Initiative. And, um, you know, we were able to, to get a little bit of money from NOAA uh, for facilitation, and then also uh, some of us in the industry also kicked in, um, and because you need facilitation when you're talking about three or four federal agencies and a few state agencies and, and, and commercial and restoration activities all in one room, and we've made some progress. Um, you know, we've, we've got this working group together, we've got um, agencies in the same room to kind of figure out, you know, can we do this permitting a little bit more efficiently, you know, making sure we're, we're, we're doing our mandates in terms of regulatory agencies, but not running people around through, through three different things and getting five different opinions and going back to square one and taking two years to get a new permit. So, um, like I said, we've made progress. We're a little stalled at the moment. Um, you know, trying to get a little bit more money from NOAA, we could use some, sure, use some support from the state. Um, I mean, sometimes having a facilitator keeping you on task is, is what a group like that needs. So, um, I think you guys are aware, I mean, one of the first projects we were looking to as a model for how this could be done differently is the Humboldt Bay pre-permitting project. Um, uh, and I think you're aware that the Humboldt Bay Harbor District got grant funds from the Headwater Fund to pre-permit acreage, and we're hoping it's somewhere between five and 600 acres. Um, they created 13 parcels, actually put those out to bid. Those all got, got secured by people. Um, there was more interest than there were parcels. We're entering the home stretch, from what I understand, from the Harbor District in terms of those permits. So that'll be a great thing to see some additional acreage there. The key is now is can we can we take that approach where we're not trying to do individual five acre leases and permit them for you know hundreds of thousands of dollars? I mean, even this project is over half a million dollars now and, and could go a bit higher. So, um, you know, we're hoping to again, maybe in Tomales Bay, create some acres, do the same thing. Morro Bay, there's potential. And, and, and as you heard, there's interest in Ventura Harbor and, and, and further down the coast to do a similar kind of project. So we're really hoping that this gets over the finish line pretty soon. About one minute. One minute. Uh, just to, to, to end up then, one of our current concerns, and one that would really become a acute concern if we're able to increase the production area, is adequate funding for our state support services, Department of Fish and Wildlife, and namely California Department of Health Services. Um, we have sort of a chronic thing every other year where there's not enough funding for, for programs to, to monitor the water quality, and especially the labs. So um, that's something that's not only important to commercial farms, but the, the, the marine biotoxin lab is going to become even more important as we look at changing ocean conditions going ahead, and we need to have a robust lab. And I know there's movement afoot to move it from microbial diseases into drinking water, which we support, and would even support some amount of fees to help support that. But we've got to look at this as a statewide issue that we need a robust biotoxin monitoring lab. That's it. Thank you. No, I, I really appreciate it, Mr. Finger. In fact, uh, later this year, uh, for the first time in many, many years, this committee is going to have uh, an entire hearing on aquaculture, uh, and in particular, interface with the state. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We're going to want you all to come back uh, along with other uh, individuals who are instrumental in the California aquaculture industry, because I think that is an area where we can see some real growth, particularly along the coast. So really good timing uh, to be able to have that discussion and frankly looking at strategies whether it's issues of land use uh, permitting and or monitoring uh, via state agencies so uh, we will be getting that out that will probably be happening in april or may of this year so we'll be uh, getting back in touch with you um wanted to be able to see a minute or less just first blush one of the items that we have been kicking around as a committee uh, with uh, crabbers is looking at a potential crab and shellfish commission solely focused on marketing. Um, I'm putting all three of you on the spot. I have some specific questions, but I'm going to let the committee go into it uh, first. But just want to see 60 seconds or less if uh, either of the three of you have any uh, comments on that. 
potential, by the way? Uh, you know, in, in our world, marketing is where it's at. So we really need to focus on, you know, the product and uh, uh, the quality of the product. And we've heard today about how we need to monitor that and see what exactly is going on with the product of crab and other fish. I would say, you know, aquaculture in general uh, would benefit by uh, uh, even inland aquaculture by, uh, by uh, some kind of a body that would, you know, help bring the facts to the folks that are out there buying the product. Because there's the general public, there's Russian tours, there's institutional uh, buying of fish, and it's just really... Uh, uh, it's highly in demand, so we have markets for them, but that doesn't mean we need to, we need to see where we can actually produce more product and keep the price up to where that we can make a profit. So I, I'm in favor of any kind of marketing information that we can have to the public and also for us to utilize. Oh, a absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, either of the two of you want to be able to venture in here, you don't have to, but... Uh, I was just going to point out that um, as we were developing the center, we were very surprised how many business departments got excited about this. They didn't think they had anything to do with aquaculture until we gave them an invitation. They Googled it and realized that there's a lot of expertise in this state that would like to participate in that. So I, I think it would be a great, a great movement statewide. Thank you so much. Please. Um, <laughs> I think we have an opportunity here. Um, to really brand, you know, California State's shellfish for sure. I think first and foremost, we got to deal with some of the things I brought up in terms of the regulatory framework. I mean, I've, I've been in business 33 years and never met demand. The, the market's not the issue. Um, the, the, the support services, the regulatory environment is the issue in our, in terms of the marine environment, so. Absolutely, no, thank you so much. That's great, great feedback, that please. One quick thought, yeah. you know, there really isn't any state that's a, the aquaculture state because it's usually around catfish or one other species, but California is so diverse, it could actually be the aquaculture state with the diversity, the market, and it's a long coastline. We could Love do that. that. No, thank you so much, thank you. I want to turn it over to the committee to see if there are any questions or comments. Please, Mr. Stone. Well, just having been on a bit of a learning curve with respect to aquaculture over the last couple of years and engaged with Moss Landing Marine Lab, there also are really multiple benefits to this conversation as we're watching changes in climate, changes in ocean chemistry, things that we worry about in other contexts. I think if, if we, the aquaculture conversation has the ability to really help us focus on things that, that we can do. And the, the finfish aquaculture is a maturing, I guess, conversation here in California, which is good. The shellfish aquaculture really provides us other economic benefits to being able to use some of the intertidal areas, marshy areas and things that we need to protect as climate changes and, and as we're needing those buffer zones for the, the effects that we're starting to see. And finding good economic use for those areas would help us preclude development, help us protect in other ways. So I think there's really multi-benefit conversations that we can have here. We also do planning very, very differently in the marine scape versus land use. And if we try to apply land use concepts in the marine environment, I think things could get messy. We do have an opportunity to start to rethink how we might want to do that. And given the different nature of the marine environment and the intertidal areas, the estuarial systems that we have, really we're on the cusp of being able to, to change that conversation and look at things a little bit differently. So having the marine lab there in Moss Landing, looking at all of those areas and bringing the academic prowess to bear in a much more coordinated way provides a lot of exciting opportunities for us all, I think. And that's something that we then, as legislators, we do budgets, we, we look at different categories that we, I think we need to start to understand better, get information about. I'm excited about the hearing focusing on aquaculture later on this year, and I hope that we can continue to do that as this industry grows. There's a huge demand for the market out there. We do have a lot of space and a lot of expertise in California, there's no reason we can't step up and really provide those resources. So I'm, I'm glad we're looking at it now. I think we have a lot of possibilities in front of us and the tighter we can do that integration with the regulatory bodies, legislature, with the businesses that are out there and the leaders that have already been there, uh, there's some real possibilities and ways to, to not make some mistakes that, that we've done before. So I'm hoping that we will have 
open minds, open doors, open conversations about how we do aquaculture, there, there's some real benefit for California in the long run. I love that. Thank you very much. And uh, we will be consulting with each of your offices to be able to see topics as well. So as we move forward, that's fantastic. I uh, would like to look to the vice chair if there are any other items. Quick question in regards to um, across the nation. Is there any uh, state university system that has a, a model program that you can point to? Uh, within the United States? Yeah. Yes, the University of Connecticut is University. the best program we know of. Um, up there, they're working uh, with New England fisheries. It's not just Connecticut fisheries, mm. uh, but it's everything from, it, it is marine, it's everything from seaweed to shellfish to finfish. Um, but that is our best example uh, that we do have in the United States. And they actually have a degree program as well. Yes, yes. University of Washington also has a degree program as well as Alaska. Those are much smaller. There, there are single campus programs. So our proposal was, you know, the, the 23 aspects, but they do have uh, degree programs there. There are a couple in, in the southeast as well. But gold standard is University of Connecticut. Uh, they're the ones that are pushing right now, yeah, with, with a lot of work. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Love to follow up in regards to the uh, hearing as well, if that works for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give our uh, wonderful panel a round of applause, please, and say thank you very much. Thank you.